police officers have read it. Who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? My favorite was the guy who stole a post office mailbox off the street, repainted it, and then put it next to the night deposit box at a bank. And hung an out of order sign on the deposit box. All the businesses came along and dropped off their deposits in the mailbox. A guy I went to high school had been stealing from Walmart in a pretty clever way. He would grab video games, mp3 players, beer etc. And throw them away in a trash can in the garden section. The workers never checked the trash contents, and he would just wait, sometimes 5 hours, until they emptied the trash in the back dumpster and hop in to get his items. Once he took a cardboard box from a display inside, filled it with video games, a PS3, and extra controllers. He grabbed some tape and pens, and drew all over the box, and taped it up, to make it look used and tossed it. An hour later he had a whole new PS3 and stack of games. I'm not a cop, but I worked crime scene. This guy had attached GPS to the bottom of people's cars who owned houses he wanted to rob. He did it to ensure they wouldn't be showing up while he was ransacking the place. I heard about one person that pulled a shoplifting scam on a large, popular and well-known U.S. retail store. They walked in with some cheap nylon product to get one of those, I walked in with this, stickers they used to put on returning merchandise. The sticker easily peeled off the product and damaged. They walked to the electronics department, grabbed an expensive box off the shelf, and went to customer service. They placed the sticker on the big box, and asked if they could return the item without a receipt. Unfortunately, no. Not without the original receipt, dang it, and they walk out. Customer service even gave the doorman the thumbs up having just interacted with the customer. This took place before widespread inventory controls and cameras absolutely everywhere. I remember an officer telling me about a B&D alarm he and his team responded to. No one was there to report the alarm, it must have been a security monitoring company that called. When police showed up, everything seemed normal, most lights were off, and there was an employee still working. Explains he was there working late, and must have set off an alarm. They almost believed him, until he said UHH, before saying the name of the company he worked for. After that it was downhill, but with a little more research he would have pretty much gotten away with it. There's one guy I recently dealt with who is on parole. I stopped him in my city, after he was looking to buy drugs, usually people come from all over to buy drugs and then leave. I issue him a warning and let him go as it's pretty common, and he sang like a bird regarding the people he was trying to buy from. Anyway, the next day, I got a call from his parole officer who says he was alerted the guy was pulled over, and wanted to verify that it was his guy that I stopped. I'm a little confused at first, but he goes on to say that the day before, he was scheduled to meet with him, but he had an excuse and bailed. His excuse was that he was in the hospital. Well when he spoke with him the following day, he was able to provide documentation that he had entered the hospital day 1 and had left day 2. Well I had stopped him at 115 in the morning, and after looking at the picture, it was 100% him. Turns out the guy had checked and then out of the hospital on day 1, then in and out again on day 2. He then rearranged half the paperwork to make it look like he was in the hospital overnight which would make my car stop of him appear like I mixed him up with someone else as well as give him a valid excuse to miss their meeting. Not sure what's gonna happen to that guy, but I thought it was pretty clever. This was in the late 90s dash early zeros. A guy in my dorm came to school solely to deal drugs. He took out student loans, registered for a bunch of 300 person freshman survey courses, where he would never be missed, then literally never went to class. All he did was go to raves and concerts, and keggers and sell party drugs. After the first semester, he was suspended. He wrote the usual back quote I was young and dumb, and in over my head sob story, and got put on probation for a semester. So he had a repeat of the fall. At the end of the year, he was kicked out and didn't care. He made something on the order of dollar sign 150k in return for about dollar sign 8k in student loans to cover a year of housing and tuition. So far as I know, he was never caught. 
It may have been a short-sighted maneuver in the long run, but in the short run it seemed fairly genius to effectively use federal loans to start your drug business. Working in a home improvement store when younger. This guy came in, went to the snowblowers, took one and went to the return desk. Said he wanted to return it, but had no receipt. They told him you need a receipt so he says, okay I'll be back, and wheels it off to car through the front door. He did this a few times apparently. Couple places even helped him load it back into his car. Most of them are really stupid, so this guy isn't a criminal mastermind but here goes. He wanted to rob a jewelers on our city's main street. So he found out the flat beside the jewelers was empty, and he hid there. For two weeks he triggered the alarm on purpose several times a night, massive headache for the police and the business, we turned up to see nothing there, nothing on cameras, thought it was just a fluke, so the jewelers turned off the alarm system, and said they'd wait until the morning, to get a new one installed, or that one rewired, because something wasn't right. As soon as he heard that, and the police leaving he tore down the wall, had already been working on this apparently, and robbed the place taking his sweet time. Escaped without anyone noticing anything for hours, until the jewelers came back in the morning. Then he tried to resell something he stole which had a serial number on it and got caught. So not that smart after all. Good effort though. There's a golf course slash country club in my town that has a PGA tournament scheduled in the next couple years. They have a guy repeatedly breaking in overnight and just lounging around and eating food, all on camera. The club refuses to report it, so they don't hurt their chances of the tournament coming. Worked at a jail. After getting off work, I watched an ex-inmate, homeless, being released, he walked over to a patrol car, looked me in the eye, and the elbowed the window in. He was walked back to the entrance and rebooked in. It was middle of January. He didn't want to get too cold. A French thief who spent 10 years in prison became a comedian when he got out. One of his stories. Finds a building, goes in, chooses a floor, and transforms the exit door into an extra apartment. Puts the apartment number, fake lock, welcome rug, etc. Puts an iPhone for sale. The person comes to buy it, he opens the door in a shower robe, and says give me one second, him just gonna count the money, and poof. He's gone from the exit stairs. One guy would print barcodes, bring them into Home Depot and stick them on merchandise in the $100 range. When scanned the items came up around the $10 range. Putting random barcodes on things isn't really illegal and super hard to notice. Guy 2 would come in an hour later and buy the underpriced stuff. Complete plausible deniability. They would then sell the stuff on eBay. Only reason they got caught is because the guy with the barcode printer slash software cut the second guy out of the operation, so guy 2 stole a bunch of barcodes, put them on the merchandise, and paid for it immediately afterwards. He then proceeded to rat on the first guy, and spilled the beans they had been doing this on a weekly basis for over 4 years. Because we could only pin the one case on him, the burglary was dropped down to a pretty theft, and he walked away with a few days in county and a small fine. Dude probably took home to put for tens of thousands over the years. Probably someone who committed a crime I never solved. With that being said I had a guy use a sledgehammer to smash his way through a wall at a Best Buy and steal a bunch of phones and cameras. He was smart enough to wear gloves and a face mask and not touch anything he didn't have to Alarms didn't go off until he exited out the back door, which the alarm company gets after a minute or two and takes them like 3 quarters minutes to call in to us, giving him a good 5 minute head start, so he was probably a few miles away before we got dispatched to it. He clearly scoped out the area before doing his deed too. Smart dude. Not a police officer, but was in ramming college. My university owned all the houses adjacent to campus. These were unlike dorms, with Raz and the same rules which included a very strict no alcohol policy. It was a privilege to live in the houses, and priority was given to a perclessman who were more likely to bend that rule because they were of age, and it was harder to police off campus in houses. There was a student who went around knocking on doors saying something, like I'm an rap, and housing director's name sent me for health and wellness checks. She'd find their booze 
take it and follow up with how she's doing them a favor by just giving them a warning. She wasn't actually in rap and was just keeping the booze for herself. The only reason she got found out was because she did it to an actual rap. The rap was male, they kept men and women housing separate and just assumed he didn't know her because of that. It was only later he questioned why they had a female doing wellness checks on male housing. They did an investigation and asked other residents. Incidents dated back previous two years. Never found out who it was. Here's one. I knew this guy back in the early 80s. Let's call him Jim well he really wanted this high powered super bike. But he knew he couldn't ever afford it. So what he did was to take drive to London and scouted about for a few days until he found that particular model parked outside a house. He goes back that night with a slitter hammer, pulls the lock, and steals the bike. He gets it home, puts it in his garage, and completely strips it, so that the only thing left is the frame and the bottom half of the engine, which he drags into the weeds at the bottom of his garden, then he pours fuel over it, and burns it a bit. A few weeks pass, and weeds have started growing over it. It's at that point he calls the cops and reports that someone had dumped a bike frame in his garden. The cops show up and he explains that he'd just got back from being away and found it. The cops take the frame and note down high name and address. A few days later, the cops call him and say that the bike had been stolen from London a month or so ago from the serial number on the bottom half of the engine and frame and that the insurance company had classed the bike as a write-off and had told the cops to dispose of it. Now. Because the frame was found in his garden and the insurance company didn't want it, the cops were duty bound to ask him if he wanted to keep it or if they should throw it. So he tells them that he'd always wanted to build a bike. He gets the frame back from them, repaints it, then puts it all back together and re-registers it as a Q-reg, stolen and recovered. I forgot to call him Jim didn't I? Same thing as the computer rooms, guys will cut the power to electrical stations damage the wiring then hide waiting for the cops to show up. Once the owners of the buildings came they would shut off the power because of the unsafe wiring that would have to be repaired in the morning. Everyone would leave for the night, then then would cut away all the non-powered wiring to get the copper. Not a policeman here, but I have a nice story from insurance slash debt collectors. There was this guy who was already in heaps of debt. Like more than a lifetime's worth of debt. He proceeded to file several palace reports for identity theft up to the point that he got protected from financial checkups. It was a temporary measure that were given to repeated identity theft victims. At the same time he had reported fake income to the eyes for the last couple of years to between 40 to 60 millions depending on the year. So when he applied for credit cards and loans, they were unable to check his financial credit due to the identity theft protection, but they checked his tax returns which showed he had a massive income. Got his loans and credit cards, emptied them out, and left the country. Not a copper, but this was pretty smart. I used to run bars at a number of venues around the north of England, one of which was Chester Rats of course. Usually, we'd just have to keep an eye out for scousers trying to nick drinks or sneak in without paying, and with it being so close to Liverpool there was a fair amount of security on site. You could tell them, as they'd be sweated, booted, a high-vis waistcoat on, and usually carrying a radio. Now there were a dozen or so bars dotted around the course, and you can imagine the amount of money that was taken from a hundred thousand or so punters drinking steadily from 11 until 8 or 9 in the evening. So every hour or so, the security would go round the bars in turn and take all the high denomination nodes from each till and stick them in the safe in the main building. So I'm stood there one day, pulling pints doing the barman thing. The security blokes have been round a few times and it's getting steadily busier. Then one bloke shows up on his own, high this on and radio in his hand, does the till, leaving the usual receipt so we can balance up at the end of the meeting. Bit early I think. But hey ho, I've got plenty to do. Then 10 minutes or so later, two more blokes show up, dressed the same. Oh, your mate's just been here, I said. No need to touch that just yet. What mate, we are the only two doing this duty today. Cue a rapid fire and increasingly panicked exchange over the radio. 
matey boy who'd done the till before used to work there apparently, so he knew the drill and he'd been watching the guards and knew just when to time it and what order they were going round the bars in. Apparently he got round 9 or 10 before he decided not to push his luck any further and walked away with about 80 grand we heard later. Just took off the hivis, dumped that in the radio and he's just one more guy in a suit in a crowd of thousands. They were a bit stricter on the procedure after that. Colon close bracket. There's a small tourist town where I grew up that is divided in half by a big river. The only way between the two sides is over a long bridge unless you go all the way around another mountain pass. These guys called in like 223 bomb threats to a posh hotel on one side of the bridge. I think they even left some dummy packages. All the police went across the bridge to do crowd control, etc, etc. The guys then called in a bomb threat on the bridge and started robbing stuff on the other side. The police couldn't be positive the bomb threat was real or not and hesitated long enough to give the thieves a head start. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to consider the idea to maybe think about potentially subscribing. Peace.